It's six o'clock, so let's get started. Um, first off, I wanna thank you everyone for joining my Ask Me Anything session this evening with Aspen Dental. I wanna give a big shout out to either Ferris State, Big Sandy, uh, Prairie State College, or a couple of the Colorado colleges. All of you students, thank you so much for joining in tonight. Um, my name is Aileen Scardello. Um, I'm the manager of the academics and industry relations with Aspen Dental. For those of you who don't know who Aspen Dental Management is, we are a dental support organization. So basically we support 800 plus dentist owned Aspen branded practices across the United States. Um, I'm a dental hygienist. I've been a hygienist since, since 2003. Um, I've worked in many aspects of dentistry. I've been um, with DSOs. I've worked in private practice. I've worked in implant dentistry. And I'm happy to say that Aspen Dental is, is my home. Um, a few housekeeping items I just want to go over with you. There is a Q&A button at the, or uh, icon at the bottom of your screen. So if you guys just have any questions, please just click on that to pose your question to the panelists or myself. Um, we'll try to get through all these questions tonight. I did have some questions come in prior to this webinar, so I'll try to get them all answered, but if I don't, you all have my email. So please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to get back with you to get your questions answered. Basically though, we're just gonna have a chat tonight, just a conversation, find out about Aspen Dental. Um, if you see me looking up, it's because I'm receiving the questions coming in. So uh, just so you know that. So, okay. So without further ado, I want to first off, thank my panelists for being here tonight um, and have them each introduce themselves before we get started. So I'll go ahead and start with you, Rebecca. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Hello, everyone. So my name is Becky. I've been a clinical dental hygienist for about 10 years. Um, I've done similar to Aileen pretty much everything. I've worked in other DSOs. I've worked for private practice. I've temped for a little while as well. I've been with Aspen for about three years and I started out as a float hygienist in their offices where I went around to the different offices in that region and kind of got to go in and be the superhero and kind of, you know, work and then go to another office. Um, and then I had a, my own office for a little while as a lead hygienist. And then recently I moved into a role called Territory Manager of Hygiene Support for Arizona and New Mexico. So I have the fantastic job of getting to really support the hygienists in my territory and just really helping them to, to grow and, and um, you know, do what's best by the patients and, and for the business as well. Great, thank you, Rebecca, appreciate that. Okay, Sulet, how about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sulet. I am currently working on a Tucson office here in Arizona. So I've been a hygienist for seven years and with Aspen for two years. Um, kind of like the same idea with Becky. I've been working for private offices and DSO private, uh, uh, offices as well. Um, so I've been a lead hygienist for about a year now, so I'm very excited to share all the information that you guys may need as far as, you know, answer all your questions, we're here for you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thanks for introducing yourselves, ladies. Um, let's just go ahead and get started with the questions that are coming in and have came in. So um, I imagine that a student poses question. They want to know, um, do we hire recent graduates um, or only experienced hygienists. Um, Rebecca, why don't you go ahead and take that one? Sure, yes, we hire recent graduates and experienced hygienists. Um, and actually it's really nice for recent graduates. We have a really comprehensive training program as well where we really, um, you get really supported by a seasoned clinician for a couple of weeks to just really get you used to and acclimated to, to your hygiene flow. Because I remember being a new grad and the doctor just kind of saying, okay, here's your op, have a good day. Um, and so I had to kind of figure it out as, as I went along. So we definitely go above and beyond um, with all of our hygienists, but you know, especially our new grads, just really supporting them, making sure that they feel comfortable and at ease with, with their patient care flow. 
Great, thank you. Thanks, Rebecca, for that. Um, so, so let, did you, were you a new hygienist right out of school when you got hired on with Aspen, or you had already been out in the field? It sounded like you said for, you worked for some private practices, right? That is correct, yes. So I started working at private offices, and um, um, I, you know, I started also working at DSO uh, offices, too, and then I ended up moving to uh, Aspen, so about oh. two years ago, so. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, uh, tell Rebecca, do me a favor. Tell me a little bit about what kind of traits are you looking for when you are hiring um, a hygienist, whether it's a new hygienist, an experienced hygienist, what, what are we looking for? The first and foremost thing is to have excellent patient care, wanting to really, you know, go above and beyond for your patients. We have a saying at Aspen where we want to treat our patients like you would your mother. So that's the biggest trait that I'm looking for. Um, also, you know, we want someone who's a team player because we do work as a team. We all support each other to make sure that the patients have the best experience possible. Um, so those are really the two biggest things that I look for when, when we're hiring hygienists. Great. Okay, perfect. I got a question. Um, they want to know um, if there's any kind of specific requirements um, to apply with Aspen and how overall is the hiring process? How does the whole hiring process go? So nothing specific. I mean, you need a hygiene license, but besides that, <laughs> nothing <a> specific <laughs> okay. um, to, to apply. And um, we actually, you know, I have hired new grads that didn't quite have their license yet. And we just gave them a couple like extra weeks of training. Zuleth actually just got done doing that for me. Um, so nothing you know, specific to, to apply. When you apply at aspenjobs.com, it'll kind of tell you what is available as far as in your area. And then you'll have um, one of our fantastic hygiene recruiters just give you a call. They do like a quick 20 minute interview, just kind of make sure that, you know, we're what, you, what you're looking for and vice versa. Then they'll pass you along to myself. Um, and then from there, you'll interview with the doctor. Okay, great. Hopefully that, you know, that answered your question. If not, like I said, you guys can always email me. So, um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about new patient exam, it looks like. So, and I know that that's always was a curiosity for me. What does a new patient exam look like? Um, so could you, Sulette, since you actually do this every day, um, yeah. <laughs> why don't you talk to us? What does the new patient look like for, you know, one of our patients coming in for the first time? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, when the patient arrives, pretty much there's someone at the front desk uh, taking care of them as far as anything related to personal information, insurance information, making sure that we, we are in network with them and um, making sure that we take care of them. Um, from there, once everything is, is settled, one of the assistants will take him to take uh, the full mouth x-rays and also a panoramic. Uh, which is going to be part of the comprehensive exam. This is pretty much what we do. We want to take care of them 100%. So it's not only the area that the patient have a, a concern about, but also if we give them the information as to what is happening in their mouth, they're going to be, um, you know, at least aware of what is happening. So from there, um, they take them to a room where they're taking a dental health scan. Think of it like pictures or, or um, yeah, pictures of, of their mouth. So that way we can show them exactly what's in there and why they're there too. Um, I utilize that as a educational um, visual. So I show them their gums. I show them what I'm gonna be doing for them once I go in there. Um, then at the end, the doctor goes in and review everything with the patient as far as their concern. And they also, you know, they, my doctor is excellent as far as touching bases with the patient, as far as my recommendation for them, as far as SRPs or gingivitis therapy, or dual profies, things like that. So um, at the end, uh, the patient goes directly to the office manager. The office manager review everything with them based on their insurance. And if there's no insurance, they, you know, they make sure that they could taken care of and they can actually uh, take care of the, of, of what they need at that appointment for sure. Okay, great. Thank and you. In general, 
I know that I'm missing parts here and there, but hopefully one of the hygienists cut that so I can answer those questions. <laughs> no, I think that gives them a good overall summary of it. I know that there's a little bit more in detail. I know you do a full mouth probing. Yeah. And what I like, you know, what I like is after you're finished, um, you know, the patient goes to the office manager where um, a lot of, um, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but some practices, DSOs, private practices, they don't offer um, financing like we do. So once the patient goes into that office manager, not only do we, you know, accept insurances, but we offer financing options, which is huge. Um, it's huge to help people um, get the oral health that they need. And a lot of companies don't offer that. So I'm, I get excited about that so that we're able to actually help these patients. Um, Rebecca, do you have anything to add on to that? Yeah, I mean, that was a great description, Zulette. Um, and like you said, we just, Aspen's really good at just removing the barriers for, for our patients because we're passionate about getting them treated. You know, no one wants to say as a hygienist, you have active infection in your mouth, but we can't help you or we'll see you in three months. So we really, they really do a good job. We all work as a team to just really put our patients first and make sure that we're getting them that treatment. Right, it's a comprehensive exam, yes. <laughs> yeah. which is yeah. super important. So, all right, great, thank you so much. Um, is there one or one or two hygienists per office? Rebecca, you wanna take that? Yeah, so it depends on the office. Um, every office has a lead or a main hygienist, and then some offices will have like an associate or um, even like a hygienist like I was in the beginning where you go around to a couple different offices, we call it a float hygienist. So it just depends on um, the office and the needs of, of the business. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, and I like, you know, that, that, that there is that flexibility there, you know, with, with the one or the two, which maybe um, Zulet, you can answer to this. What is it like, does it, you know, having the two hygienists in the office, does it help for you to be able to step away from your existing patient? Maybe you're doing an SRP. Can you just kind of walk us through how you do that? Absolutely. So yes, it's a, it gives us that flexibility, right? So once we have that double hygienist, that hygienist will take care of the patients that we have scheduled for the day. And the other hygienist will take directly uh, full access to, to the new patients. So we get the opportunity to um, educate the patient, to spend time with the patient, to make them understand if they have problems understanding why is the uh, why is SRP instead of just an adult trophy. So we show them visuals, we show them the scanning, we, show, we have top of the line, you know, devices that is going to help us to um, make sure that they're, they're taken care of. So Yes, it's, it's not hard having two hygienists. Once it's one hygienist that we look for the moment so we can, you know, um, step away. And sometimes, you know, we, we do uh, acknowledge that the patient that we have on the chair, uh, we are respectful of their time for sure. So we just want to make sure that they are okay with me stepping out. If they say, no, I'd rather for you to take care of me right now, then I'll let, you know, the assistants know, they'll let doctor know. So that way they can, um, they can help me with that. Great, fantastic. Um, I got a question here. Um, I'm gonna, going on here to, to talk to you, you, you students and hygienists out there about part-time and full-time in just one second, but I did have a question. Um, and, and we already have someone who wants to come work for us. <laughs> well, <Yay. possibly. laughs> if, I were to, if I were to want to get a job over Christmas break, um, they're one way away from graduating. Um, could they be hired as a dental assistant for Aspen in the process? Yes, we um, recently did that actually at Zulet's office. So yes, if we have the right person and it's a you know a fit for them and a fit for us, we're going to do what we can to to get them on board and to get them part of our Aspen family. Great. Okay. Thank you. And that's perfect. I think that's a great opportunity. I know when I was working in the chair uh, at Aspen prior, um, we were, we were doing that having dental assistant, you know, they were in school, we were helping them out by being dental assistants. And then they moved right on into the hygiene position after they got their license. So, you know, it's, it's a great way to get your foot in the door and it's a great way to, you know, even just see how the office is running. Um, so perfect idea. 
Um, okay, someone had asked about part-time and full-time. What does that look like, Rebecca? Do we hire part-time hygienists or just full-time? Walk us through that. Yeah, so Aspen, we're big on having a work-life balance. So we get that, you know, we have a life outside of work and we want you guys to have a life outside of work. So we do offer full-time. Um, full-time for us starts at 32 hours a week and then part-time would be anything less than that. So yeah, when, um, when you apply for a job, it'll give you the option and just tell us what you want and we can, we can work with it from there. Okay, great, thank you, appreciate that. Um, there is a question, well, and I'm glad that actually somebody asked this because it's, it was always on my mind as well. When I was in school, um, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there about um, dental support organizations. And I also think that Aspen Dental is a lot different. We are different. Um, just the way the companies around the culture, everything about us makes us different, which is why I call us home. Um, but someone wanted to, they asked a question on, uh, does Aspen want its hygienist to meet particular quotas? So Sulet, I'm going to ask you this. Are you basically told that you have to hit a quota on you know, on how many patients you see or anything like that? Absolutely not. So that is something that I really, really like about Aspen is that they allow me to be a provider. They allow me to, you know, take care of the patients. Um, if I see two patients on, on the day, that's fine. If I see eight patients on a day, that's completely fine too. It also depends, you know, um, there's a lot of new patients that don't want to get started on that day. So I always trying to make sure that I get um, the free time for them as well, considering the other patients. So absolutely not. There's no quota on, on Aspen. Um, I know I, when I was in school, I heard older things, but um, that's for personal experience. And we can talk a little bit more about it if you want to, but yeah, it's, it's no, no quotas. No quotas. Okay, great. No, I, I, I know because I, when I was in school um, and I was talking to one of the students the other day about that, when I was in school, um, I did have an instructor that, you know, told me about DSOs and, you know, how bad they were and to stay away. And, and, uh, and I did. Um, and I wish I wouldn't had, I wish I wouldn't have waited so long. Um, you know, a lot of private practices, you know, that they don't offer health insurance and things like that and the benefits and, and it's the same. I mean, we're still giving great patient care. So, um, do, do you did you feel um, negative about DSOs? Well, when you were in school, Rebecca, did you have any kind of the same experience? Yeah, I mean, I had those instructors too that scared you. I feel like it was almost all of them, to be honest. Um, and so similar, I I stayed away for a while because I thought private practice is where it's at, and there is some fantastic private practices out there. But you know, the main thing for me that made me really call Aspen home was I'm respected with the doctor as a provider for, for my clinical knowledge. You know, I went to school, we all went to school to, to, you know, for dental hygiene and they really, really throughout the whole office, front to the back, respect you for that. Um, that to me was, was key. And then, you know, Aspen has lots of different ways that they give back to the community. And I really wanted to be a part of something that that was about more than just me. And I've been able to volunteer for we give back to veterans and just things like that and give back in those ways. And that's really rewarding as well. So um, Aspen's definitely a lot different than anywhere else that I've ever worked. I agree. So, and, and I'm the same, I feel um, a lot different now that I'm on the other side of that. So, um, and, and since you brought up the um, outreach programs, let's just talk about, I was talking to some of the students um, last week about it as well, and just going over what we do and what we offer. And so I'd like you guys both to touch on that. So let, what, tell us about the day of service. Uh, so the day of service is pretty much um, a day that we take in particular to take care of those patients in need. So there's always a qualified patient that it needs that care that they cannot be taken care of for finances, for whatever reason you may think of. So we choose that patient, the doctor actually is the one who actually uh, help us with that too. And we just take care of them comprehensively. So we take care of them and we make sure that um, there's gonna be other patients that come in and then we do take care of them too. So it's, it's just the day that we provide services for those ones in need that they cannot make it. 
or financially or as I mentioned to you for any other reasons. Right, perfect, exactly. I mean, that's really nice <laughs> to give yeah, back yeah. You know, to, to the to people give back who, can't, who can't afford to you know, have oral health care. So, so I think that's huge. That was a big thing for me as well with Aspen. Um, Rebecca, do you have anything to add on to that? Give us a couple more, tell them, tell them a little bit about the mission trip, thing like that, things like yeah. that. So we also have um, an overseas dental mission trip where um, once a year they pick a team and they get to go, I believe last year they were in Argentina. And so they get to go for two weeks and just really give back to the community. It's, it's a really, really great experience to be able to go over there and just see that. Um, also, they have the mobile mouth mobile, which I got to partic participate in last year. Um, it's literally a mobile like RV where you, and there's operatories in it. There was three operatories. And so we got to um, give back to the veterans and just really, you know, give them cleanings and we did some extractions. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very rewarding to be able to, to use your skills that you've worked so hard for to give back to people in need. And just to be, uh, just to see their faces too, once you take care of them, you know, their, their smiles, it says it all. And, you know, like you said, Becky, it just it gives you that like reward that you did something good and you know you did something great for them so it's like you know sometimes it makes me feel like crying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when mean, i see that happen but you know that's what you see and you see it all the time here so i'm really happy that you know we can do that for them no, me too no i know it makes me want to cry too that means that you're human <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah. I think it's funny because I know that hygienists are like that, you know, is, is people who are in college to go to hygiene school or us hygienists. I mean, we just have that thing about us, you know, we're, we're in the medical profession because we want to take care of people and it makes us happy when we can, especially when we can do it for free for someone who can't get it done anywhere else. You see them cry, their new smiles. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, when I was a division director with Aspen, I uh, had two of my hygiene managers get to go one year after the other, and one went to Africa, and then the other one went to Honduras. And man, I mean, she came, they both came back, like, just uh, so emotionally touched. So that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so thank you guys so much for sharing that. Uh, there is a question about but um, I'm imagining this is from a hygienist who's been out there. Um, downtime, let's talk about downtime. Um, it's, I know some private practices, if you, if there's downtime, you don't get paid sometimes. And, and I shouldn't just say private practice. I, I imagine other places, I don't know, but I've been there where yeah. there's work, you go home. <laughs> so we'll ask and make, have you ever gone home, Sulet, for not having a patient? Have you ever been told to go home? Absolutely not. No, um, actually at Aspen, there's a lot of things that you can take advantage and you know, learn about something else if you want to. Um, if you want to help the front desk, if you want to um, get your hands on assisting the doctor or helping the other assistants to do an FMX, do a panel, or even for your hygiene, you can always call your patients and confirm appointments. There's always something that you can do. So at Aspen, they don't make me clock out. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's it's easy. It's just easy to be occupied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always something to do, There's right? <laughs> always something to do. Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes down, I know that we're all here to, for health care and to take care of patients too, but you know, we also want to get paid. <laughs> right. <laughs> we also want to pay off our college loans and, you know, we have families and things like that. So right. yeah, that's, that's highly important. It was important to me too. So, um, and since we're on the subject of that, um, Rebecca, I'm going to pose this question to you. They, they want to know about the hygienist salaries at Aspen. So can you talk us a little bit through that? Yeah. So the salaries are very competitive. It obviously depends on what state and market you're in, but they're very competitive as far as, you know, correlating to the, to the state that you're in. Um, on top of the salary, so it is like a base hourly pay. Like Zuless said, if we guarantee you an amount of hours, that's what you're going to get. Um, we also have a opportunity to bonus. We have like a bonus structure, which is based off of a couple different things, but um, it's definitely a very good way to have hygienists that add five, six, seven dollars an hour more onto their hourly pay just because of that, that bonus structure as well. 
So it's, it's really nice. And then obviously all the, the benefits of having full-time medical dental 401k, we offer free um, CE classes as well to go towards your licensure, which is really nice. So there's lots of great opportunities as far as benefits and pay with, with Aspen. Yeah, no, I agree. I know when I was in the, the, the director role there, I mean, there were hygienists making six figures. I mean, it's not all that uncommon. Um, I think it's great. I love it that we can get out there in the workforce and, you know, make some good money, um, have health care. Um, I, like I was saying earlier, I didn't have health care for a while. I just, I didn't even know. I was pretty much told that most, you know, dental offices, you just couldn't get it. So, you know, and that's a big thing to have, especially in this day and age. <laughs> So, uh, Zulette, do you have anything to add on to that? Uh, I mean, well, I guess you I, you, I don't really want you going into your salary, so <laughs> we'll just skip over that. <laughs> I just then, want to say, like, woohoo for bonuses, woo <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Great. All right. I have a question here. I'm not quite sure. Let's see. I'm going to just ask, and maybe you guys can answer this, and maybe you, Rebecca, can. It says that they're collecting info for um, a port. Let me start over. We are collecting info for, por for a portfolio, which will be given to us post-graduation. So any specific suggestions for their portfolios to increase job offers? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, any, I mean, if you have any sort of patients like before and after, if you, you know are able to get their obviously consent, like post-op bite wings after SRPs. Um, those are always nice. Um, Aspen is probably going to be getting lasers soon too. So any sort of like laser certification, anything like that, they can help you stand out. Any, you know, additional dental experience if you, you know, participated in like a, in a volunteer event or something like that, anything like that would definitely help you to stand out. I also got um, letters from my teachers, a couple of them, you know, recognizing me. And, and so that helped me too, to, to obtain my first job, giving those letters of, of reference and recommendation. Well, maybe even some outreach programs. Yes. You know, yes. Those on there. I think that that's great too. I know I had some of those in my portfolio. So, um, and I'm going to move into a conversation since you brought that up, Rebecca, can you talk to us, um, uh, both of you about our technology. So you were talking about laser and stuff. So will you just help, help the hygienists and the student hygienists out there know what do we have in our offices? Are you going to walk into an Aspen office and dip film? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I have walked into those offices, not in Aspen, in different offices. Um, so everything is digital. Charting is digital. Um, radiographs are digital. Like Zuleth had kind of touched on, we have like a, a special tool, an iTero scan basically that we do that is even better than an intraoral camera because it's literally a 3D model of, of your mouth and you can show different angles and it's fantastic for like the tartar on the linguals of those lower anterior is just really showing the patient. Um, it helps to, to really get their buy-in. So we have lots of different, you know, technology like that, that, that we offer. Okay, great. And Sulette, what other kind of services does Aspen provide? Um, so we normally, um, you know, the, the normal stuff as far as uh, dental cleanings, the restorations, um, any, any specialties too. So we have an endodontist, we have uh, oral surgeons. Um, and as far as uh, ortho, ortho, we do have the Invisalign uh, incorporated to our office. So for those patients that they decide not to go through braces, there is options for them. And then the Atera scan, as Becky was mentioning, that's a great tool to show them uh, an outcome of, of that. Also, we have um, a little bit of other devices, the oral cancer screening that we do is um, think of it like a flashlight. It shows everything inside of the mouth enhances the tissue. You probably have seen it on your school too. So and that's something that we also take care of that too. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, I know there's like Zoom whitening. Yeah, um, yeah. Do some whitening. So, I mean, we, we pretty much have it all. Although I will mention this and, and if I'm wrong, Rebecca, stop me here, but <laughs> um, we, not all offices, not all of our practices have endodontists and oral surgeons. So. The dentist, it's up to them if they want to refer a patient out 
or if they want to have them seen at our practices with our oral surgeon or endodontist. Is that correct, Rebecca? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Okay, great, perfect, thank you. Um, I wanted to bring up some autonomy because um, I, I feel like by this question, maybe um, it, it, they, they're kind of leaning towards wanting to know about that. So as a support team uh, for you, Rebecca, I'll have you answer this. Um, do like you coming out as a hygiene manager or whatever, <laughs> a director of hygiene, um, that support system, are we telling the hygienist like what to do or do they have autonomy? No, no. The hygienists have complete autonomy as far as what they want to do. My whole job is to support them in guiding them to do what's best for the patients, basically. But um, I will never say, you know, Zuleth, you need to meet this quota or whatever. Um, I'll help her, you know, come up with different ways to, to be accessible and, you know, able to treat the patients comprehensively. But no, they have complete autonomy as far as what they're, what they're recommending. Now, if there's, you know, deep pocketing and they're, you know, doing profies and things like that, then we'll step in and say, hey, let's look at these a a AAP guidelines together and we come up with the answers together. But um, that's, yeah, that's as much as, as I step in as far as that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Well, no, I think that's important because especially being a student, I remember coming out of college just being frightened. Like I didn't even know if I was probing correctly and I was nervous and frightened and and it was nice to have somebody there um you know to, it's nice to have someone there to help you instead of you know just kind of throw you into the fire and you're on your own so but yet give them the autonomy so the hygienists and the doctors work together is that right Suled? I mean who's doing the diagnosing do you ever work with your docs or how does that go correct so my doctor gives me uh the autonomy to actually go with the patient, talk to the patient, educate the patient, and let them know um, if they need SRPs, if they need a gingivitis therapy or an adult profi based on my findings. So I base all of that um, with x-rays, the dental health scan, perio pockets, you know, bleeding, everything that you guys have, you know, uh, learned in school. And from there, I talk to my doctor and let him know, doc, this is pretty much what I found and the patient is gonna need this. This is what I recommend. And he's here or she's here for this concern. So there he goes, doctor, and they, and they support me. They actually have pretty good doctors that they go there and say, my hygienist told me you have this. So this is the reason why we need to take care of this. And what I like about my doctors is they support me so much that they even say, you know, it's, it's important for us to take care of this first because we're not going to put any kind of restorations on, you know, in seal bacteria. So that's something that I really, really, I'm very happy that I work with doctors like that. No, I think that's huge important. Um, I, I know that I, I, it sounds, you know, and, and I know for Asmodel that we give this great comprehensive exam and the hygienist and the doctor's partner like that. I think that's really important. I know, um, I worked for a private practice one time years ago and um, he was getting ready to retire. His son was getting out of dental school. He was coming on and I, that's where I came in. And basically um, he hadn't probed any of his patients for, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years, no FMXs were taken. So it was like starting a brand new perio practice for him. So I love that, you know, we're probing as we should be, and the doctor and you are consulting and getting the best recommended treatment for our patients. So I think that's just super important. Um, okay, so let's see, uh, what did it say? Oh, can a, can a student or a hygienist, I would imagine, um, relocate? So Rebecca, you, you could talk to that. Yes, yes, absolutely. We have Aspens all throughout the country, over 800. So we're definitely open to, to relocation. Um, sometimes we will also help with relocation fees and things like that as well. Okay. Yeah. And I know that sometimes there's sign on, sign on offers and things for different offices. You know, if it's in a tougher location, yes. Um, yes. We'll, you know, $5,000 sign on bonuses and just, you know, there's a lot to offer. So, and you can always relocate and we help you relocate, right? Um, okay, I have a question here, uh, and, and that's great because I actually have two of the, these same questions, so this is awesome. 
<laughs> can you talk a little bit about our software? <laughs> what kind of software are we using? Are we using Dendrix or can you go over that? So we oh, use our own Aspen specific um, uh, <laughs> software. It's called EPMS. It's actually, maybe I'm biased, but I think it's easier to use than Dentrex. It takes a little bit like every software to, to get used to it. But I mean, I would say within a day, you know, you, you've got it and, and you're used to it. But um, yeah, that's what we use for everything. And our digital x-rays and all of that are, are linked up to it as well. Great. And that's something that comes along in the training too. And I know that was huge for me because it's always hard to walk into a practice, especially like if you're being a temp hygienist and you walk in, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to use this software. And plus I got to do all this work. So it's really nice to be able to be trained on the software, trained on the products, you know. Um, and that was something too, uh, Zulette, yeah. uh, there was a question about that, that on the products, are you, are we required to use particular, you know, like only a particular product and are you able to, to manage your own products, Zulette? Yeah, absolutely. So as a hygienist, I normally take care of my patients as I feel like it is necessary for them. So um, there are some products that they we do have on the um, at Aspen um, is part of our um, list of things of, of uh, things that we can recommend. Uh, but if I want to go over something different, it's just a matter of like finding the product on, on the Henry Shine uh, book and, you know, get it. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, having the conversation also with the doctor, letting them know why I would like to use this product instead of this. Um, it's, it's just, that, you know, it, it for us to be on the same page is just, it's, it's fantastic. So I don't have any limitations. I, I just go as I feel and research are changing too. So... We want to make sure that we do take care of the patients as you know we always um reading about it and if one causes a staining and the other one is not so we'll go and, and base the the pros and cons about each, each one of them so there's that autonomy again where you're there, able to yes yes so you're kind of like the ceo of your own business so to speak that's right yeah, yeah. Okay. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I felt that way too. It's, it's nice. You have the doctor, you know, you have to partner with the doctor, of course, but you know, the fact that you can research what you want to use and, and, and use it because that's what you feel is best. So, so that's great. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, regarding the relocation, how would the licensure work? Are there any different options to choose or would I have to take a new state exam again? Rebecca, you want to take that? Yeah, so it depends on the specific state, but you're going to have to do whatever that state dental board requires as far as licensure. Um, if you're a new grad, I do believe that typically they require you to take it. If you've been um, seasoned for a little while, you have a certain amount of clinical hours, some dental boards will, will kind of let you not take some of the tests. But yeah, you need to be licensed in whatever specific state you want to relocate to or in the process, you know, getting the ball rolling as far as doing that. I, if you allow me to say, Alina, I have uh, some uh, friends, hygienists as well, that they re relocated to Oregon. And for her, the license was not a problem. The problem was the local anesthetic. The anesthesia, that's a main one for them. So I know that she needed to retake that one. Um, that was after two years of her being a hygienist, but I know those things can change too. So it depends, like Becky's saying, depending on the, on the state that you go to. Yeah, so if you're um, wanting to relocate to a particular area or state, we would, you would probably just have to check into that state, what do we need to do, and then we can help you get those things done. Yes. So that you can work in that state for us. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the Hawaii to open it. <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs> no, wait, all of us? <laughs> all of us, let's go. Let's go. That's I'm right. already licensed. No. <laughs> Oregon's not bad either, so. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I wanted to ask you both, um, there was a question about uh, COVID. So, and gosh, I hope by the time you students graduate in May, this is gone. I hope we've conquered this virus by then, but um, for now, could you talk to um, what we're doing in the offices, Sulet, 
to follow the proper procedures and protocols regarding COVID? Sure. So we follow protocol as far as everybody to be safe from the patient um, getting into the office until the patient leaves. So we're talking about temperature check. We're talking about um, making sure that our patients, um, if they need to wash their hands, if they're wearing masks, if they're not wearing masks, we provide one for them. Um, as for example, hygienist assistants, we continually washing our hands. We use the N95s, we use the class three, you know, masks, um, face shields, you name it, surgical caps. We have our own uh, lab coats. Um, we are making sure that all patients feel safe when they come to us. So, you know, working with mouths, they're like thinking, oh my gosh, COVID 100%. But actually they start noticing that we are the best ones because we actually protect ourselves 100%. So as far as protocols, as far as safety, uh, you got it, you got it here. Right, and, and we, we were shut down for a while like the rest of the world. <laughs> right, yes, yes. Yeah, and we, you know, we open slowly like everybody else and we're taking all the right precautions and we take this very serious for our patients and for ourselves like Sulet said. So um, this, you know, this virus isn't anything to mess with and we're not gonna mess with it. We're gonna do what we need to do to take care of the patients and to take care of our staff, our employees. So, um, okay, thank you for that, Sulep. Um, let's see, um, regarding scaling and root planing, how much time would you give a new hygienist for, a, for an SRP? Are you feeling rushed? Like, would you would they be rushed? Is there a time frame? So, Rebecca, could you answer that one? Yeah. So, and that kind of ties back into the whole autonomy. So, as a you know a new provider, we your first day we have you always meet with your office manager and your team and, and kind of decide on what works best for you as far as a time frame. So, you know, typically we um, you know we do like an hour, hour and a half for a half a mouth of SRP, but every patient is different. We're big on quality over quantity. We want to make sure that that patient in that chair is getting excellent care. So if we need more time, anything like that, we wanna make sure that you have that autonomy to be able to do that. Um, also for, uh, for your recalls, it's typically an hour. If you need more time though, you know something comes up, as long as you communicate that with your, with your front staff team, they're able to, to take care of that for you. Excellent, great. So let any, do you have anything to add on to that? So, you know, you're, you're actually in there doing the scaling and root plantings or the perio maintenance. Are you feeling like rush ever? No, absolutely not. And, and actually um, it, having two hygienists also works magical with, with what we're doing and, and giving the patients what they need. Um, so one hygienist is taking care of one patient. I do take my time with my patient. I just need to communicate that with my office manager and let them know, hey, I'm going to take an hour and a half to do half of the mouth of SRPs for these reasons. And they pretty, they pretty much know the way I work. And sometimes I let them know, hey, give me two hours. Hey, you know, do not schedule anyone else. Hey, you know, I always mention that to them. So I never feel like rush. I never feel like pressure. I never feel like oh my gosh, I'm running behind. There's times where you, I do run behind, but I always try and, you know, to make sure that I give my patients the, the time that they need. And absolutely, if they're taking care of the scaling and root planning when there is infection, absolutely, I'm going to take my time with them. So there's no rush on that. There's no limitation. Right. I think that's really important, especially for students coming out of school to know that because you know, we don't we don't have uh, two hygiene chairs running with one hygienist going back and forth. So I know that some DSOs do that practice. Um, yeah. We follow yeah. best practices. So we're giving our hygienist time to to take care of the infection. That's what that's what we went to school for. That's what we're doing. So, <laughs> hi, dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. We're almost finished here. We just have a few more questions. So, um, uh, acts, okay. So what are our office hours and like 
you know, the days, what, what is our access to care? So the office hours vary slightly, but they're typically um, 7.30 to 5.30, three days a week. One day a week, we open a little bit later, like a nine to seven around that range so that we can be there in the more evening hours for our patients that work later. And then Fridays is usually eight to 12, eight to two, we do half days on Fridays. And then up to 16 Saturdays a year. Um, typically it, it works out to be about one Saturday a month and those are also shorter days. So like eight to 12, eight to two on those days as well. And, you know, we do that for access to care for patients who, who need to be seen at those hours that they just can't get in. So I think that that's one thing that Aspen Dental is about is access to care. Um, we're really trying to see people. I know that we put our practices in a lot of rural areas so that we're able to actually see people who, you know, had to drive an hour or two or three or four to their very first dentist office, their dental office. So so we're really big on access to care and making sure that people, everybody has an opportunity to get the right oral care that they need. Um, so um, Rebecca, will you talk a little bit real quick about um, the demographic of an asthma dental patient? Sure, so we do have a, a specific demographic. Um, it's you know typically a blue collar type person um, and you know someone who probably hasn't been to the dentist in like three-ish years or so. Um, so, you know, there is times when the patients are a little bit dental phobic and you have to kind of just be extra gentle with them and help to kind of overcome those obstacles. But the best thing about that is that once you do, they're your patient for life. They'll do whatever you want, you know, as far as, you know, flossing and all the, all the <laughs> OHI that you're going to tell them at home, they're going to be doing it. They're on top of it because they want to please you because they trust you. And winning their trust is, it's such a rewarding feeling. There's nothing like it as a hygienist. Great. No, I, I, I think that's wonderful. And it's true. Once, once you, you know, build that trust, then they're going to come see you and, and they'll even floss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we've pretty much covered almost all of the um, questions. It looks like, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I want to just kind of end this webinar with um, asking each one of you, and I'll, I'll say myself, um, why did you choose Aspen Dental to call home? Give me a specific. Um, I'll start with you, Rebecca. So in full transparency, I joined Aspen Dental thinking, oh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if this is really for me, um, but, you know, I, I want the full time and things like that. And I fell in love with Aspen. I mean, it's the only <laughs> practice I've ever worked for where there was no red flags. I mean, it's just everything just, it just kept getting better and better for me as a provider from the support to the autonomy, just everything was fantastic. So um, that's what made me choose to stay with Aspen and make them my dental home. And then when I figured out more about opportunities to move up, because being in the op for 10 years, I was ready to see what else I could do. And so it was nice because they gave me assignments to kind of grow and stretch myself, you know, slowly and, and to kind of take on more of those leadership, um, you know, characteristics and those leadership opportunities, and then eventually move into my into my role now, which I think is the best job in the whole wide world um, <laughs> to support all the fantastic hygienists. So I really I love Aspen. I couldn't ask for a better company to work for. Just to piggyback off what you said, this is not, you know, I, that's one of mine, but because um, I wanted to touch on the growth and development. I mean, when when I was a director with Aspen, a hygiene director, I, I we would have annual meetings where we're, you know, having speakers come in. And so we're always working on the growth and the, de the development of our hygienists. So if you want to stay in the chair for 10 years, we're going to show you how to do that. You know, we, we, can bring vendors in and whatever we need to, whatever you guys want. Um, and then um, what was I gonna say with that? Um, oh, I forgot my train of thought. Anyway, that's okay. I just, I, I love the growth and the development of our hygiene. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Or if you wanna get out of the chair, so beyond the chair, you know, you can look at me, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm on the academic team, you know, working with colleges. And, and so um, there's so many opportunities for hygienists if you want it, if you want there to be. Right. So. Okay, um, Sulette, let's hear, why, why do you call Aspen your home? I'll give mine and then we'll end, end this webinar. Absolutely, so I'm not trying to, you know, come across as a diva here or anything like that, but 
<laughs> I do love the, the respect that I get uh, from my coworkers, from my doctors, from anyone that works here. It's so important to have that autonomy. It's so important to have knowing that you are considered to be a provider that you have no idea how much it changes in, in your mind as far as starting to take care of a, of a patient. Um, prior working for Aspen, I was considered to be one in the line, right? The next one, the next one, the next one. Working here at Aspen, I do take my time with the patient. I do show them, I do educate them. I do let you know, my office, is, office manager know, hey, this is what the patient needs. And there's a no way that they're gonna remove anything on the treatment plan if I do not authorize that. So I really, really like that. I think it's the best, um, uh, one of the best offices that you can work for. Um, and I just wanna say something to all of you, you know, everything that you hear as far as VSOs, just you know, give it a chance. There, you don't have nothing to lose. Give Aspen a chance to um, just try it for yourself. And that way you can make a decision as to uh, what you like to do in the future. I think that's great advice. I wish someone had told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> all right, so I'll go ahead and give mine. Um, why did I choose Aspen? And, and all of those are all reasons. So they're all huge reasons for me too. But I really, really loved Aspen's culture. Like I was just so involved with everything that was going on, um, you know, from the, the mission trips, the outreach program. I mean, they have a reason. They, there's a purpose at Aspen, you know, um, not only just that, but, you know, just we have a lot of fun. I mean, I, you, you just guys just wouldn't believe some of these events we go on and these mission trips and these mouth mobiles. It's just a ton of fun. And, and I just I love Aspen culture. It's huge. And, and culture to me is very important. I, I want to like where I go to work every day. I don't want to be unhappy where I go to work every day. And, and that's what I love the most because there's, there's actual culture. So, <laughs> so um, all right. Well, we went through all the questions. I'm so glad that we got them all answered. Um, thank you, hygienists and students for jumping onto my webinar. If you guys have any more questions, reach out to me. We'll be looking forward to seeing you hopefully in the future. Good luck and congratulations to all of you for getting through school or, or wherever you're at in the middle of it all. So I know exams are coming up and things. So good luck to y'all and thank you so much for joining us. Rebecca Zulat, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody have a great night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.